All right. Thank you, Nikki. And uh, I am so, so honored and so proud to be here on the air with a good, good friend of mine. We've uh, been on the radio together, but apart for many, many years. We've seen all kinds of things happening to our city. We have been through uh, the 92 riots. We've been through the earthquakes. We have been through Kobe's death. He is here from down the hall from Real 92.3. Big boy, welcome to Coast 103.5, Big. I just, I love you so much, and I wanted to have you uh, come on the air with us. We know you love Coast. You know we love you. And we wanted to come together and uh, talk about what's happening and what you're hearing from your listeners and share what we're hearing from ours. First off, thank thank you for inviting me down. I I really appreciate it. Um, From our listeners, we're just hearing, you know, um, people are fed up. People have a lot of pent up uh, energy. You know, this isn't the the first time that we've had bear witness to something that we felt was, you know, totally unjustified. We felt that it was too much. And I think anyone that that has a a heart, you know, or anyone that has vision, anyone that can feel could see that to kneel on someone for eight minutes and 46 seconds. And I felt that it was longer because when I first watched the video, Ellen, Mm-hmm. I was looking and I was like, okay, I see this officer kneeling on this man's neck. And then I got to about the three minute mark. And then I noticed I still had like six minutes left. And I'm like, man, what, what happened? And yeah. so I continued yeah. to watch it in real time. And once I got to where he was not responding anymore and I'm listening to the crowd, I'm like, oh my God, please don't tell me that this man died. You know, cause I'm still watching it for the first time. When they went and lifted his lifeless body, I knew that he was gone, you know, and just listening yeah. to the the people that were around, you know, the one lady that came up that says she worked in the medical field. Could she please just check his pulse and watching the other officers just kind of stand by? I think we were just bearing witness to 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 animals, to monsters. You know, if someone were to come into my house right now, Ellen, and I defended yeah. my family and one of my cameras picked up something that may may look a little excessive. I would be yes. intimidated, probably charged with a murder or a manslaughter or someone, you know, so to look at that and be a human being, my listeners, they're, they're highly upset. The one thing that I have been talking with my listeners about is I really want to see people channel that anger. You know, like there's a difference between protesting. There's a difference between rioting and there's a difference between looting. And I don't think that protesters are looting. Looters are looting. Yeah. People that want to go out there and tear up their communities or tear up other people's communities. Those are the people that's not really here for the cause. They don't know George Floyd's name. They don't know about what a bail amount is. They, you know, they're just out there for one. If you go and smash up a store. So you can get you a pair of shoes. You're not going to run with a mod. You're not doing that. You know, you, you, it, it, it becomes I and me as opposed to us and we. And I mm-hmm. think that it waters down the actual message that we're trying to send. Because we have, yeah, totally. you, we're, cha- we're changing the narrative. And we're changing the narrative. Mm-hmm. And the media sees that. You know, it, it they, we, they don't run the story about the officer. They don't run the story about George. You know, your, every top quarter bottom of the hour it's it's about looting about looters and about rioting and unrest that's what we're seeing even more of right now and i just hate specifically in los angeles what we're doing to the city here we're already in a pandemic um how do we recover from this you know what i'm saying like people always talk about they don't own anything and i can understand that but also donald trump is not going to send any money to california because he doesn't care about california you know, so now you we're burning down everything, we're vandalizing, we're making our property value go down, and then we complain about not owning anything. People probably don't want to come back into your community. And if they do, it'd be someone that we always talk about gentrification. You're going to get pennies on the dollar. Someone else is going to buy it. They're going to raise your rent, whatever it may be, and then you won't be a part of the community that you thought you were fighting for, you know, so... It's really a spiral. It's a long spiral to recover from, and you're yeah. right about that. And 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 big, you're a you're a dad. I'm a mom. Um, what do you feel for our children? You know, I have a lot of my son Jaden is 13. My my daughter Jade is 11. She's 12 in September, and 
I have a lot of dialogue with them. And the reason why my wife mm-hmm. and I have a lot of dialogue is because these are scary times. We're already in a pandemic, something that we're all going through for the first mm-hmm. time. And now on top of a pandemic, every time you turn on a TV or social media, you see unrest. So um, just as a dad, I have a lot of communication with my kids. You know, what are you feeling? What are you seeing? What are your worries? You know, um, and we go and we go through it together. You And, and for anyone out there, not just being a, a dad or Ellen, you being a mother. Also, just um, there's a lot of people that's going through just just with your mental wellness right now. Yep. This is a lot to bear. This is a lot to carry. Already when we went into 2020, thinking we thought the worst thing, Ellen, was, oh, my God, we lost Kobe. You know what I'm saying? We lost Kobe. And that was we already said that 2020, oh, it's 2020 sucks. And then a pandemic. And and now this this unrest. And there's so many things that we're waking up to. This is a this is a very challenging moment. And I think that. We need to continue with with the dialogue. I need to continue talking with my wife and talking with my kids and come in and, and so-called do my work because, you know, not only am I talking to the people, I need the people to talk to me. I need to hear them. You know, yeah. we, we say yeah. constantly, oh, we have listeners, you know, or people say, oh, you got me through this. You got me through this. They don't understand what they get us through, you know, and right. it's, it's, it's definitely a relationship. And I think that's why I come in every day and take a a temperature or check a pulse what's going on how you feeling because i think i feel like we really need that yeah we do we need to share it and 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 i i just i love you so much i'm so happy that you could take time out of your show to come on to to this show's big boy uh real 923 um uh, we're all family big and uh you know the words that you spoke i think are really going to help uh our our listeners a lot we're we're where our phone lines are open and it really does help to talk and to share your feelings. And, um, and you're right about that. It's we're in it together. We really are. I mean, I know it, it, everyone's saying that we're in this together. I, I love, I saw mm-hmm. someone uh, on Twitter say, you know, stay apart, stick together. Cause that's what we've been told. Yeah. You know, yeah. we've been in this pandemic, stay apart, but now we stick together. And, and don't let this dissipate. Um, don't go outside and get fresh air in your nose and you forget the reason why we all came together. If, if people are speaking black lives matter today, black lives matter tomorrow. Yep. They matter next month. They matter next year. Yep. Don't let this just be an emotion and a, and a time. And now that we're, everyone right. is speaking, let's continue that dialogue as well. You know, let's continue the dialogue and let's oh, yeah. continue to look out for, for each other because we all we have, we're in a position where we can totally heal it or we could totally mess it up. And I love another thing I heard. Let's not go through it. Let's get into it. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I think that's what's happening. So yeah. j- just use that same mm-hmm. energy, the same the same energy as I'm looking at, at your monitors in the studio. And I see, you know, peaceful protests and I'm looking at also with, you know, looting and rioting. Then use that same energy. If you can be out for five to ten hours and, and putting in that so-called work and smashing windows, you know, use that hour as well to to vote. When it, when it comes time to vote, you, you use that yeah, same right. energy, you know, the stolen computers, use that and log on to, to vote, you know? So come on now. Yeah, it, it, so it's cool. our turn. There's some people that's playing chess and I feel like a lot of us are playing checkers, you know, look at the long, look uh, at the long yeah. run. You got to get, you got to put your moves. Uh, you got to make moves in advance. <laughs> Think about them. Right. Um, big boy, big boy's neighborhood. So you're here on our show, big boy. Who's doing your show right now? I'm about to run over back right now. I'm about to, I'm, I'm about to run back over. You know what I'm saying? Like, but thank you, Ellen. I appreciate you. I'm so you. happy we're neighbors. Oh <laughs> yeah, vanilla ice, yeah. ice baby. Go ahead. Now. All right, Ellen. Thanks, big. My love. Uh, <laughs>